Hey, what's going on, everybody? Joseph Sadar here. Afraid you guys are doing well, as always. Guys, happy belated Father's Day, man. I hope you guys had a wonderful um, day yesterday. Um, yeah, I don't think yeah they do Father's Day anywhere else but America. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just assuming. I don't know for sure. But anyway, so yeah, guys. Before I even say anything, I just want to start off by saying like, God is good, y'all. Like. God is good and he is really worthy of all the praise. Like he never disappoints guys. I don't know. I just wanted to start off just by saying that. And welcome to today's prophetic word. As always, I pray that it blesses whoever it's for. And yeah, just remember, of course, before we even get into it, just remember not every prophetic word is meant for everyone. If you feel like a prophetic word is meant for you, guys, it's very important to take it to God. Make sure you're taking it to the Lord to be sure. It's very important to be testing the spirits upon hearing a prophetic word. Guys, God has the whole picture, right? I only have just a snippet. His prophets or his people speaking, they only have just, just a little um, snippet of what he's doing, but he has the whole picture. So just be seeking him for the confirmation. Amen. All right, guys. So we're going to get into it. The title the Lord gave me today is it's your time. You must be brave. I'm going to go ahead and start, as always, with a couple passages of Scripture. And the first one comes from Matthew 10, 16, and it reads, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Genesis 12, 2 reads, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Esther 4.14 reads, For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Joshua 8, 7 through 8 reads, Then you shall rise from the ambush and seize the city for the Lord, your God will deliver it into your hands. And it will be when you have taken the city that you shall set the city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord, you shall do. See, I have commanded you. And the last one comes from Genesis 13, 17, and it reads, Arise, walk in the land through its length, and it's with, for I give it to you. So guys, the Lord just wanted to start off just by congratulating his people on making it through a very tumultuous uh, seasons, through the very tumultuous seasons of the past. You know, he really wants to congratulate you all for passing the tests that you've endured in seasons past. You know, he and he's ultimately telling the remnant, you know, to those who have been faithful and have been pruned, he's really wanting to tell us that you've been doing a lot better than you think you have. So he wants to start with a little bit of encouragement, you know, before we even get into the meat and potatoes. But, you know, there's some of you who have just been your own worst critics. You know, some of you have just been very, very hard on yourselves, you know, throughout this journey. And, Yes, there's been setbacks. Yes, there's been some failures along the way. But the Lord is saying that you have taken those opportunities to grow in him and to learn from your mistakes. And he's saying that you've actually done really, really well. It's it's not something that we think about throughout this journey. We're often, you know, we we're often we often remember our failures rather than our victories or rather than our um our uh, our growth if you will and it's like i said we can often be so tough on ourselves and so harsh at times but the lord is saying that he's more than capable of handling our little imperfections and we can be so hard on ourselves like like i said we don't see the growth and he's wanting to point out the growth in you you've come a long way and the lord wants to highlight this and the scripture that keeps coming to mind is uh, Matthew 25, 21, and it reads, 
His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. That's such a fulfilling and such a wholesome verse. And the Lord is speaking this over his good and faithful servants who have stood the test of time with him, you know, not wavering from the left nor to the right. Um, he's congratulating those who have been obedient and well-pleasing to the Lord. And he's saying that you have done well. I know it's, it's stuff. It's those are things that we don't often just like receive over ourselves, but the Lord's is really saying to receive this. You have done well. <laughs> Take a deep breath and receive that. Um, and there's no need to beat yourself up. Proverbs 24, 16 reads, For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Now listen again, guys. Look, this word is not... For everyone, not everyone has stood the test of time with the Lord. Not everyone has been pruned and who has gone through like the wilderness season faithfully. But to those whom it's for, the Lord is saying that you have done well. And for many of you, you've been placed into some prominent positions. And the Lord is saying that it is time to go. Like it's time to go, guys. It's time to get started. You are being positioned to execute the mission the Lord has set you up for. And that's the main thesis of this word, guys. It is time to go. It is your time. The time is now, and it's very clear that this is not a drill, guys. This, this is not a drill. The training wheels have officially come off. And the Lord is saying that you have truly been called for such a time as this. Many of you are, you know, you're in new places you haven't been before, new spaces, new communities and new levels of influence. And God is saying that you have been moved into these places for a reason. You know, there's a method to his madness, guys. Like you're in these places to not just take up space, you know, but you are there because you're supposed to be in the forefront. You know, there are some of you who aren't used to being the center of attention or or on the forefront. But the Lord is saying that he has called you there for a reason. You are not the same person you were a year ago. And this is something that the Lord just keeps reiterating just, you know, throughout um, each message, it seems. But yet, you are not the same person you were a year ago. And some of you still think you hold the qualifications of last year or the year before that. But the Lord is saying that he has qualified you now. You have the qualifications for this year. Guys, we're in the here and now. We are in the here and now. And it is your time. And you guys can't belittle this. You can't belittle this at all. For some of you, you know, it's easy to watch from the background and be productive, you know, out of sight. But the thing is, that's just not your portion anymore. We're just in a new time. We're in a new era. And it's time for you to come up front and serve the Lord with your gifts. Remember Esther 414. Guys, this is a very strong statement. You cannot remain silent at this time. You cannot remain silent at this time. The Lord is choosing to speak through you because it is you that have been called for such a time as this. It is your time and it's time for you to be brave, guys. You have to be full of courage knowing that the Lord will take care of you wherever you go, whatever you do, no matter what. Joshua 1, 8 through 9 is actually like one of my key verses in life at one, at one season, excuse me. And it reads, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, 
but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Guys, this is the passage to really meditate on in this season. The Lord will make your way prosperous during this time. He will. He means what he says. But you have to follow him and you must remain strong and courageous during this time. You really have nothing to lose. And and it's really true, guys, um, even biblically, because if this word applies to you, then that means you've already been living your life in full abandon, just denying yourself, picking up your cross and following after Jesus. So it's nothing new to you. Matthew 16, 34 reads, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And guys, listen, this isn't an easy thing to do. The reason why it's truly your time is because there are so many who are using the Lord's platforms for selfish, monetary, and even nefarious reasons. You know, and if you've been subscribed to me in this channel for like a little over a year, then (laughs) by goodness, you should remember all the prophetic words the Lord had me release about counterfeits and the counterfeit gospel. You know, not everyone with a platform or a YouTube page who calls themselves Christian or prophetic, not all of them are legitimate. You know, there are some who haven't fully denied themselves and surrendered themselves to the King of Kings. And, you know, guys, it's actually kind of mind blowing. There's even a verse that warns about being pastors. Being a pastor is a really good thing, but, you know, everybody wants to be pastors. Everybody wants to be a mouthpiece for the Lord. But, James 3, 1 uh, reads, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive stricter judgment. And I'll just say one thing, guys. Like, I would not have chosen the prophetic or the pastoral route if it was up to me. Like, I, I kid you not, I ran from it for a season. And one solid reason I know I'm called to be in this ministry is because the Lord closed every possible door in my life. And I was seeking out other routes, man. I was seeking out good corporate jobs. I was seeking out the military. I was seeking out a lot of things, but the Lord closed that door. He closed those doors and bringing this prophetic word together. I'm not saying this to um, make anybody afraid of going into this ministry route, but it further just solidifies the fact that the Lord is calling you out now. He's, it's your time now because there are many who are the counterfeits and he's bringing the remnant to the forefront. And he is making room for you to be the mouthpiece. Because again, guys, he is sifting the remnant from the counterfeits. You who are the remnant To those of you who are not in front of the camera to make a dollar, the Lord is saying that it is your time. To those of you who are not chasing clout or internet fame, you are the ones the Lord is placing into the forefront. To those of you who are humble and you're full of honor, the Lord is exalting you. And to those of you who are not seeking to be famous off of Jesus's name, you are being ushered to the front. Matthew 23, 12 reads, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And Isaiah 41, 10 reads, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These verses are for the faithful remnant, guys. Um, There are enough people in ministry with platforms, whether they're in churches or whether they have internet platforms, 
there are enough people who are trying to acquire fame and fortune um, from Jesus's name. You know, there is there is a surplus of prosperity gospel teachers and new age teachers out there. And the Lord is saying that he is raising this remnant with amazing abilities, talents and skills who are going to bring the light to this dark world. I mean, guys, like in case you haven't noticed, the world is saturated with churches and ministries, and there's still a lot of darkness in this world. But the Lord is raising up this remnant to be the light. And the difference between this remnant and the counterfeits is that I keep saying remnant a lot, but these remnants, they will not be compromised. They are Christ's true church, and they will purely fight the good fight of faith. And you can reference 1 Timothy 6, 12. And Matthew 16, 18 through 19 reads, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. There is major authority with the remnant, you know, those who are unashamed of the gospel. The Lord is saying that he is granting access for many of you to preach the gospel and to use your gifts, abilities, and talents and skills to bring glory to the King of Kings. The Lord said that he is using you, not the other guy, not the other gal. He is using you, you. And he's calling you higher and he's telling you to be, be brave. You must be courageous because you are the right person for the job. And the time is most definitely now. You are qualified and the Lord is cleaning the cesspool, if, if you will. I know that sounds harsh to say because, guys, there are a lot of counterfeits. There are. And again, the reason why the Lord is raising up the remnant is so that the light, so that they can be a light in the world without compromising for the darkness. The remnant won't compromise for fame, fortune, or status. You know, the Lord is going to take care of your fortune and your well being. And you don't have to worry about how your needs are being met. Proverbs 13, uh, 22 reads, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Guys, God's got your, your wealth and your well-being in check. And Deuteronomy 28, 13 solidifies this as well. And it reads, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. To whom this word is for, these verses are for you. It's your time, and the Lord trusts you, so it, you must be brave. And one last example I'll leave you with. It comes from the story of David. And I'll just read this one verse from uh, 1 Samuel 17, 26. And it reads, Then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now, the big takeaway from this passage that the Lord really wants to highlight is just the, the attitude of David. And the Lord is really saying that this is the attitude the remnant should have. Not arrogant or boastful, uh, cocky, but confident, competent, authoritative, and protective over the word of God and the name of God even. And we have to have that boldness in these last days because it really is 
your time, guys. And when you're on the forefront, you have to be able to have that assertive and unashamed attitude when pursuing the things of the Lord and leading the Lord's people. And like I said, because it's it's really your time, guys. Because it's very interesting, too. Because in verse 28, David's brother, um, how do you say it? Eliab, he actually accuses David of being prideful and full of insolence when, you know, David acts like, hey, what shall be done for the man that kills this giant? But the thing is, David knew it was his time. Like, sure, there were perks to killing Goliath, but just as David said, you know, he wasn't going to let anyone blaspheme, you know, God or the, the armies of God. And here's the thing, guys. David wasn't the most qualified. You know, he had a lot of fight, you know, for such a little guy. But, you know, there were many other soldiers that seemed more fit to battle Goliath, right? But And, you know, David was just a teenager and he was just a shepherd at that time. But the point is he arose to the challenge. He knew it was his time and he didn't fret about it. You know, he was brave and he conquered that giant. So even after, you know, hearing all this and you're still, you know, a little apprehensive about taking charge for the Lord in a certain area of your life. Just remember, <laughs> David couldn't even fit the gladiator armor, you know, but he didn't let that stop them. He worked with what the Lord gave him. And in his case, it was just, you know, a, a sling and, and a stone. <laughs> that, that That's all it was. And that's all the Lord is saying that you have to do. Just trust in him and work with what he gave you. God will take care of the rest. Like on paper, guys, David was not qualified to defeat Goliath. And yet he did it in such dominant fashion. He made quick work out of him. And likewise, the Lord is saying that you have been called for such a time as this, and you will be just as successful. Again, David just knew it was his time. And that's the attitude we need to have just during this time. You know, like no excuses. Goliath, Goliath was probably about 10 times the size of David too, but he still did it. No question about it. You have to rise up because the Lord has appointed you to take this mantle. And the Lord is saying to get prepared. Like he's about to do so many awesome and miraculous things on your behalf. So in conclusion, guys, just be ready. Be open. And he will do many great things things on your behalf. Just continue to be obedient. Amen. And guys, that is a wrap on today's prophetic word. Guys, I pray that it has immensely blessed you as always. And I'm going to continue to do my best to share the Lord's words more consistently because look, here's the deal, guys. I really appreciate y'all. I don't take any of you for granted. I don't take the Lord for granted. So I really appreciate just this little small platform. You know, I, I really do. You know, I love chatting with you guys and I love, you know, just reading emails, responding, all that good stuff. So I really, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate you guys. You know, I've, I've gotten some awesome, some really amazing testimonies that at the, at the risk of sounding cheesy, they have really warmed my heart. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I mean that like from the bottom of my heart. So I really appreciate you guys. I mean that. I'm so very grateful, you know, the Lord is using this very small platform just to get his word out. And I thank you guys for tuning in, really, I, I do. Thanks for all you do to contribute to the growth of this channel. Like the likes, the shares, the comments, you know, emails, all that have been, they've been very much appreciated, guys. And of course, just gotta, I have to thank all of you guys just who have financially sown into this ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. It has been just a huge blessing 
in so many ways, God. So I thank you for that. Thank you so much for that. I pray you all had an awesome weekend uh, last, well, this this past weekend. Um, it's a beautiful day this Monday, so I'm hoping it stays that way. But yeah, I pray you all have a an amazing week, and I'll see you all in the next video. I'm out.